my name is Natalie Cantor. I am doing my screencast for multimodal communications. So I want to start by saying that I think that this creative nonfiction piece is uh, very interesting and after the reading it almost seemed like a very colorful book review instead of more of the classic creative nonfiction that we've been reading in class. So I thought that was very interesting. I wanted to start off with the main point or the thesis of this piece which I didn't actually find in one single sentence or paragraph so I'm going to kind of summarize for myself. Um, what this piece is about is mostly Stead Turkle's working. People talk about what they do all day and how they feel about what they do. And I'm saying that his thesis is that that book inspired him to spend a decade working as a janitor inside of a hospital. And it attempted he attempted to create a union that would ensure political rights for workers um, as him and his other commun communist friends were committed. Uh, in the end, his righteous undercover act did not end in success, but improved him as a person. And it was all because of this book uh, that he continually, continuously discusses in, um, in this piece. So... Some of the interpretive biases that he displays throughout this piece uh, are very strong. Um, it's, it's understandable because in this he describes how he spent a decade of his life undercover all because he was inspired by this book. Uh, so we understand he's fanatical, but he's inspired and he spent so much time that it's almost impossible not to be overwhelmingly biased. However, he does openly display, display his bias so we can understand and mitigate um, that understanding. He also uses very objective descriptional language when he's talking about the book. For example, he describes all of these things, the different sections of the book, how long it is. Um, of course, saying that it's a good read uh, is important because he, it really inspired a decade of his entire life. It's pretty, pretty shocking for me. Uh, however, one thing that I think is uh, very important to note to note is that he doesn't give much information at how his experience actually ended. Um, and we learned in class that by not saying things, you're really saying things uh, within a creative nonfiction piece. For example, he said, at the hospital, we lost two union drives, the jig was up, we faced too much money and fear. So by only saying these two sentences about how he, le he uh, ended the decade of his life undercover, we don't understand exactly what happened or why it happened, but instead are left in the dark as uh, an audience. So that's negative. Um, so I'm going to talk about my own interpretive biases now. I think first I was uh, thrown into it by this title, A Real World Education. As a Minerva student, that's one of our slogans. So I was kind of very interested in how his real world education, uh, he, how he talks about his own so that tied me in originally. Then I want to talk about my insecurity about communism as an American. Uh, it's relatively logical that learning about his communist trade organizer, past life, it was very strange to me. It made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, he use, even uses the word comrade in this, in this paper. So it was very interesting. Another interpretive advice I had was that I was astounded at how he originally went to Harvard and then worked at Brown. Uh, here, as we can see, but uh, he didn't use it. He, he immediately started working as a janitor in a hospital, and that was very confused until I finished the entire piece, and I realized that it really offered him an intense gratification and knowledge that nothing but real-world experience could have really given him. And then lastly, I want to talk about the context that I uh, learned about um, to really enhance my knowledge of this piece. So the first that I looked into was the communist principles that he was referring to. I learned about the new communist movement and the new left. And I learned that there was a huge campaign focused around organizing the working class. And it was all focused on Marxist ideals. So now I understand that his, his ideas were part of a much bigger society and a societal problem. And he wasn't necessarily an outlier uh, that I originally thought he was. Uh, additionally, Stud Turkle's book, another content, piece of context that I took, uh, it really reminded me of Humans of New York, which is a current publication where uh, a photographer takes pictures of people on the streets of New York and uh, learns about them and, and takes some of the, the things that they say so people kind of understand the humanity within such a big bustling city. Uh, that was one of the things that really um, stuck with me is that maybe the modern context of this book that inspired him may, may inspire other people to do something probably not as drastic as going undercover for 10 years, but maybe something interesting that will one day spur into another creative nonfiction piece. And then last, me, lastly, my other piece of context was actually a reading that we already did in class, which was Nickel and Dimed. Very, very similar how a woman went undercover to a low-income job to understand what it was like, but in a totally different way. She went about it in a very, very different way of talking about that. So I think contrasting the two contexts, um, one of which was much focused on the inspiration for doing it, the other one was talking about literal things that went down during her time, uh, was important to take note and how it was, this was written. So it really um, taught me a lot.
And uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I hope I didn't speak too quickly, but I had to fit it in. So have a good day. Bye.